If you're thinking about moving to Draper, Utah, then you need to watch this video about the top five neighborhoods in Draper. Hi, this is Melissa Ballman with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services and Utah Homes by Melissa. Today I'm gonna to take you through Draper, Utah and the top five neighborhoods in the area. As a Draper resident myself, I'm gonna show you not just how the houses look and the neighborhood look, but talk about some of the highlights and features of each subdivision, if they're in an HOA and things like that. So come on, let's take a look at Draper neighborhoods. So the first community we're gonna look at is Suncrest at the top of South Mountain. Suncrest is about five to six miles up to the top of the mountain. And you can access that area either from Draper or from Utah County. So there's two ways in and out of Suncrest. There are townhouses in Suncrest and there are single family homes in Suncrest. They range anywhere from 2,000 square feet up to about 8,500 square feet. And the sales price currently in Suncrest um, is anywhere between $330,000 up to about $1.5 million. There's also still a lot of new construction happening in Suncrest. So if you're set on living in Draper and you want a new construction home in Draper, then Suncrest can be a great option for you as they continue to build in the area. Suncrest is part of an HOA community and those fees will run you just over a hundred dollars a month in the single family homes of Suncrest. Some of the things that you get is when you enter the subdivision you'll see there's a small marketplace and cafe, there's a basketball court, a swimming pool with a slide, and Suncrest does have their own fire station as well. But one of the best things about Suncrest is the amazing views of Utah County and Utah Lake and also Salt Lake County. Now keep in mind that because you are higher in elevation, you will have more snow in the winter time, but on the flip side, in the summertime, it's also cooler. The day I filmed this, it was 95 degrees in Draper on the valley floor, but when I was up in Suncrest, it was only about 86 or 87 degrees. So now let's head a little bit further down the mountain to the benches and check out South Mountain area of Draper. Now there are townhouses in the South Mountain area and single family homes, as well as they are building apartments in the area as well. South Mountain, you can find subdivisions or areas of South Mountain that do not have an HOA and some that do. The homes on South Mountain range anywhere from about 2,000 square feet up to about 5,600 square feet, and you find those sales prices in that area somewhere between $325,000 up to $850,000. So one of the nice things about South Mountain is you're on the bench of it. So you're not quite as high as Suncrest if you don't want to make that far of a commute, but you can still have some amazing Salt Lake Valley views from South Mountain. Now keep in mind that South Mountain also is home of a paragliding park and they paraglide here because they have consistent winds. So it's not uncommon on South Mountain for it to be breezy in the area. And during storms, when storms are blowing in, it's not unusual in some parts of South Mountain to see 40 and 50 mile an hour winds or gusts that even go up higher than that. Also on South Mountain, you have the new Draper Rec Center that was built and the Draper City Swimming Pool. So it's very conveniently located if you do wanna take advantage of the Rec Center. 
Next, we're going to head over to a luxury estate over in Steeplechase, which is just along the east bench of Draper. The Steeplechase homes, like I said, they are luxury homes. So on the small end in Steeplechase is about 5,000 square foot home and goes up from there. And the price range you, I would say you're considered lucky if you can find something about $900,000 in Steeplechase and homes in there go for $3 million plus as well. Steeplechase is part of an HOA and they're still building some new homes in that area and so they've kind of divided up little areas in Steeplechase amongst themselves so the amenities that you get with your HOA fee can vary depending on the home in Steeplechase. One of the things people like about Steeplechase is you're on a larger lot, so you're not squished in with your neighbor. And because these are luxury style homes, it's not uncommon for there to be many pools in this subdivision. Even if you don't have one, you usually have a lot of neighbors that have pools, rock walls, um, waterfalls, things like that. So it's nice if you want an area just to spread out a little bit more and not feel like you're right next to your neighbor. Now we're going to head down to the valley floor for the rest of the neighborhoods in Draper. So first, let's take a visit at the Bellevue neighborhood. Bellevue is really conveniently located next to or very close to Corner Canyon High School, Draper Park Middle School, and there are elementary schools in the area as well. Not to mention if you're a dog lover, you have the Draper Dalen Dog Park that is not far from the Bellevue community as well. Now, homes in Bellevue on average are about 4,000 square feet. So they are a little bit larger of a home than what you would typically see on South Mountain, let's say. And for Bellevue, your average sales price in the summer of 2020 so far has been anywhere from about $640,000 up to $800,000. Now, Bellevue is part of an HOA community, but they really don't have many amenities for Bellevue. So your HOA fee is pretty low with just being about a couple hundred dollars per year. And honestly, it just helps preserve the neighborhood as you'll see driving through here. It just looks like a nice community and things are well kept in the area. And that is one of the benefits of having the HOA here and it being so low of a price for the fees. With Bellevue being on the valley floor, it is conveniently located. If you wanna to get to the main areas of Draper off of 123rd, so you can shop, restaurants, grocery stores, and Interstate 15 is only about a mile, mile and a half from the Bellevue community. So if you are gonna be commuting, it is conveniently located near the freeway. The last community I'm going to take you over to is Cranberry Hill. That is located between 114th South and 118th South. So you're actually a little bit closer to the freeway than what you will find in Bellevue. You're about a half a mile to maybe a mile tops to get to Interstate 15 from Cranberry Hill. Now, the average square footage in the Cranberry Hill area is about 3,000 square feet. And in the summer of 2020, your sales price is anywhere from about $450,000 to $550,000. Cranberry Hill is not part of an HOA community. So if you're looking for a cute subdivision, that is conveniently located in Draper that does not have an HOA, then Cranberry Hill might just be the place for you. Some of the features that people love about Cranberry Hill is not only is it conveniently located to the 15 grocery stores, um, restaurants, and everything that we've already named with 
for instance, Bellevue, but you also are only a few blocks from two different track stations in Cranberry Hill. You also have Lone Peak Hospital in Draper that's a short distance, like less than a mile from Cranberry Hill. You also have a large private school just a couple blocks away that takes kids anywhere from pre-K up to 12th grade. So it's not uncommon for you to see a lot of kids in this neighborhood that attend that school because the parents like the idea of allowing their kids to walk to school and not having to worry about getting them to and from every single day. So if resale is a concern for you, you generally don't have an issue in the Cranberry Hill area. Even though Cranberry Hill is located in Draper, the high school for the subdivision is actually Alta High School. So just be aware of that if schools and high schools are important to you, that it is in a different high school boundary. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so that way you're alerted each week when I drop a new video. Now, if you're thinking about making the move along the Wasatch Front, I'd love to connect with you and talk to you. So make sure you just give me a call, send me a text, whatever you gotta do, drop a comment, and let's connect about your moving goals in the Wasatch Front Salt Lake City area.